Okay, cool. All right, so welcome to our monthly team call. We are going to be chatting. I don't know what that was. We're going to be chatting about our um, UK launch, which is October, oh my God, 21st, 22nd. 21st. Okay. 21st. Um, thank you. And Ashleen is from the UK and she is going to be sharing with us kind of like how to branch into a new market because she managed to build a massive business with Beachbody in the US and Canada without being from here. So she's going to teach us how to do that without being from the UK because I don't think any of us are from the UK. I'm not totally sure. But before we get started with her, I'm going to chat with you guys a little bit about what we're doing as a team. Um, and obviously you guys can run your own groups, but just as a team group, we are um, we have four different groups going on. So we have um, once a month, we're doing a what is challenge group for UK people a what is coaching group for UK people. And those two groups are gonna run back to back. So the what is challenge group goes first, then the what is coaching group goes next. They're in the same group. I just put our um, team calendar Google Doc in, our, in this chat so you guys can grab it. And there's a UK tab there. So this is our UK groups. Um, then we have a UK new coach training. So what that is for is for people that have said yes to you for coaching, um, but obviously they can't sign up to October 21st, but we're going to start training them. And that group is just open and ongoing. So that means like there aren't going to be like daily posts or anything. It's just a training set up for the products we have in the UK. And it's going to be similar to our new coach training, but like I said, you know, only UK based products so that when October 21st comes and they can sign up, they are ready to sign up and they're trained, right? They can just kind of get rolling with it. So those are our three groups for potential customers and coaches. And if you have potential customers, they can get signed up um, with Beachbody On Demand. You just Google like Beachbody On Demand UK. They won't be assigned to you, but they can at least get started. They can join your challenge groups. That is totally fine. And then the fourth group we have is our UK marketing group. So that's a group that we're going to be adding to um, learning how, you know, adding, everyone's going to be adding ideas on how to market to the UK. So those are kind of like what we're doing. If you guys have any other ideas or you want to do something different, you can totally do that. Um, I just want to share with you what we're currently what we currently have planned. So um, if you guys have any questions, I know Ashleen said she's done a lot of Q&A with these, right? Yeah, so put my chat here as well. Um, just one thing, like whenever I'm talking, I just can't read the chat at the same time for some reason. So if there are any questions, I'll just like come back around. After. Okay, so just ask them in the chat or unmute yourself or whatever works for you. And um, I am going to grab her stats because they're pretty impressive. So um, she is a five star diamond coach. She has been coaching five years as of September. So almost your five year anniversary. Um, a two time premier coach. She went full time in the business in seven months, which is amazing. Um, she retired her husband from his job after a year and a half and she just bought a house in Florida. Where in Florida? Um, Palm Bay. It's on the space coast. Nice. Really nice. Cool. Random, Cause I, I've lived in California the whole time I've been in the U S so like I've never been in Florida. <laughs> oh, like, let's just buy in Florida. It's cheaper. Like, okay. I was going to say way cheaper than California. So. <laughs> Yeah, let's face it, I wasn't getting like a loan over there being self-employed and stuff. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> awesome, cool. So I'm gonna let you take it away and if you guys have questions, please ask them. Um, and if you have questions about our groups too, you can obviously ask those also. Okay, um, well thank you for having me here. I'm really excited to talk to you guys. Um, like I said, like this is totally gonna be open for questions. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a spiel first, like my background and how I got here and how I got into Beachbody, because there's a bit of a lesson in itself for all of you for how I really built my network. Um, so I'll just start really at the beginning. Um, I grew up my entire life in Northern Ireland. 
my accent's really muddled, so I have this SoCal thing going on, but then the random Northern Irish comes out. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've lived there. Northern Ireland is one of the four countries in the UK, Northern Ireland, Scotland, England, and Wales. Um, yeah, um, I basically grew up hating fitness, <laughs> loathing. It was like, you know, it was the Antichrist. Um, just, I don't know, I guess a part of our culture was a little bit, well, come on, we're Irish, okay? Like, we're just known for drinking. <laughs> so, you know, like, exercise wasn't really the forefront or anything, but I think more my issue was always that I had really low self-esteem when I was growing up. Um, I just never really felt like I fit in. And even from the youngest age, I can remember, like, first grade, second grade, I remember purposely not bringing my, my gym clothes so that I couldn't participate, right? Like I was purposely not bringing it because just having very low self-esteem, gym class is like the worst place where like the spotlight is on you. I'm sure some of you can relate. <laughs> so I just grew up like never really getting any kind of exercise, um, not getting the whole fitness thing, thinking that people who worked out were vain or posers. You know, I just, I couldn't, if you had told me I'd be doing this, I would have laughed so incredibly hard. <laughs> I would not have believed it. Um, so yeah, things kind of continued that way. I became a teenager, got into the underage drinking, smoking. I was never overweight, but I wasn't healthy. Um, I had about 20 pounds to lose. I was I guess that kind of skinny fat type person. And Britney Spears was like the big thing at the time, right? We all remember Britney Spears abs, right? Come on, hands up if you remember the abs. Like, rock solid how did she get those right so that's whenever I really started getting towards you know I gotta like be in shape I don't know how you know that kind of vicious cycle so I was trying like crazy diets um pills the most random things off infomercials like does anyone remember there was this thing you could buy where you would like hold and you would sit down and you would like crunch I don't know it was like apparently it gave you a six pack right I bought everything nothing worked of course and then I tried going to the gym um, around my university years and I just again I still had such low self-esteem that I would go and I would get on a treadmill for like two minutes and I would turn purple like I just because I was so un unfit and I remember just leaving in tears because I didn't know what to do and I felt like everyone was looking at me because I'm this mess all out of breath so I couldn't do the gym either so I was just kind of always at this rock bottom and my self-esteem and didn't really know how to get out of it did not help at the time that for those four years in college university I was in a really kind of mentally and emotionally abusive relationship too so this is kind of what pushed me to leave the um the UK uh I just kind of decided at the end of my degree I was just getting out of there I was just I was falling into a really bad depression this I was in a really, really dark place. So I was like, okay, I need to get away from this dude. I'm going to India, like <laughs> the furthest point <laughs> across the planet as possible. And I'm like this little Irish girl who's 23 and never really traveled outside of the UK, maybe to Spain or something with my family for like a, a vacation, but I've never traveled on my own, let alone go to India, you know? So, but I did that and, um, stayed in Asia for a while and then came to the US and on day three of being in the US I met my now husband so it kind of all worked out happily ever after I have gratitude for the ex from hell for treating me like crap because it pushed me to leave and find my husband and now I'm a coach and life's great all because I was treated like dirt so always find the lessons right <laughs> the things to be grateful for so that's how I wound up here but the cycle kind of started all over again of feeling really self-conscious, low self-esteem, because I happened to move to a particular part of California known as the South Bay of LA. And I'm sure you guys have seen like images of Venice Beach, right? Where people are just running around half naked, fit, healthy. And here's me like, I don't fit in here and freaking out because everyone's half naked, even if they're just going for a walk on the beach or on the strand. And I'm like, <laughs> like total culture shock can't handle this craziness so I just when I moved to the US I was just like I can't handle this I was just it freaked me out um, I guess going to plastic fantastic central is a little bit of culture shock but I actually love LA um, so that kind of put me into a bit of a depression and I was like right I really need to do something here and so I saw this infomercial uh, for insanity I remember there was this dude screaming dig deeper people and I just remember thinking that shit looks so hard it's gotta work 
<laughs> it's, it's actually what I told myself, pardon my French, but I was just like, if this doesn't do it, nothing will, right? And so I got it, I got Insanity, and I remember doing day one, and I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> if you've ever done the fit test in Insanity. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so, but I did it, and I remember thinking to myself, I survived. Wow, I actually like conquered that. And I already felt my self esteem like going up a little bit. So I did day two, almost died again, but I didn't, right? So like I started getting into this whole, I can do this, I can do this, kept pushing clay every day. By day three or four, I was already noticing I could go a little bit longer. I wasn't getting out of breath so fast. I was getting a bit more stamina or I could do one or two reps more. I was already noticing the change. And I was like, okay, like maybe this is what this whole fitness thing is about. Like I'm starting to feel really good. <laughs> um, and then you know how it is like week one, week two, you start seeing the physical results and I was hooked. Like I just felt amazing in here. So my whole journey with Beachbody, my whole transformation, it's in here, which I think it is for most of us anyway. It's how it makes you feel, right? Like I think you don't really become a coach unless you are in love with these products and you want to help other people feel the same way, the, the way you feel. And I was feeling so empowered and just my confidence went through the roof and I ended up doing two rounds of insanity and I was just like a transformed person. And yeah, so uh, I'd only been living in the U S for six months. Um, didn't have a coach, didn't know what a coach was. And this lady found me in a group online and she was just like, you're screaming this stuff all over the place over your Facebook because I was literally like an addict. I'm one of those crazy people that's just like, you know, posting everything. Like, I did this workout, insanity, blah, like screaming it from the rooftops. I was an advocate. I was bleeding blue before I knew what bleeding blue meant. And yeah, she was just right away like, you need to be a coach. And I'm like, I don't know what it is, but okay. So I was literally the easiest sign up you can ever get. I'm that person you pray for, right? <laughs> when you invite the instant yes person. But it was because I'd already gone through that journey, right? And that's what you hear. Like a lot of the best coaches are those people you're already like totally in love and really believe in it and stuff. And not saying you can't come in from the business perspective, you totally can too. But in my experience, I've noticed that that's the best way. Uh, so that's kind of how it all began. And I guess a lesson in itself there is I moved to the U.S. I got my green card in February, two th or fe yeah, February 2012. And I became a coach on September 1st, 2012. So I'd been in the U.S. for six months. I'd had major culture shock. I was hiding from the world because everyone was outside half naked. How many people do you really think I knew in this country? I knew my husband. I knew our roommates and a couple of people that I'd been working with in my job in Whole Foods Market, but they weren't on the friendship level. Like that was it. You could count them on hand. So whenever I hear anyone say, oh, I don't know anybody, I'm like, <laughs> like, I am the queen of not knowing anybody. Okay. Like I crush that objection like this because it's just... It's just a mindset. It's just um, trying to self-sabotage yourself when you think you don't know anybody because it's fear of the unknown and all of that. But trust me, guys, like, if I can do this, anyone can do this. I'm not like some crazy guru. It was just, I was really passionate about it and I just dived in and decided, well, whatever, I'm going to try to do this. And so um, I became a coach and because I had no network, it was a lot harder for me in the beginning. So I kind of thought to myself, I didn't get a lot of help from my upline, by the way, but I just kind of figured, well, how did she find me? She found me in like a group of mutual interest. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll just hang out in groups of mutual interest and connect with people who are from the States. And that's really how I built up my network. And I guess that's also a lesson in itself too, because Obviously, you can do your Facebook page, you can target ads to people in the UK and stuff like that. But for me, the best way I've ever found anybody in this country was just being in groups of mutual interest. So what I mean is not hanging out in a fitness group, right, where there's already a thousand Beachbody coaches posting every five seconds, join my challenge. We all do that. I did it too when I was new. But like, as you can see, I'm pretty airy fairy, right? I've got the stars, like that's me. So I hang out in groups like that, like crystal groups or light workers or psychic readings, whatever. So I connect with my tribe. Like I'm purposely trying to find people who get me. And as soon as I'm in a group, what I do is I will like do, I call this the Bonnie angle, you know, the photo. 
All right, that's the type of photo. I'll get like a Bonnie Ingle style photo. I post it in that group and I'll just introduce myself. I'm like, hey guys, I'm Ashleen. Uh, I'm a mom to a toddler boy just looking to connect with other like-minded moms. Send me a friend request if interested. It's like a dating ad. I don't mention anything about Beachbody when I go into these groups at all. Like I just want to make a connection, make a friend with someone who's very similar to me. And the first time I ever did that, I just tried it for a laugh and I got a hundred friend requests in one day. I was like, ah, it works. And that's pretty much how I built my network. And obviously you can't keep coming back into the same group and being like, Hey guys, I'm new, send me a friend request. So the next tactic really was just, um, you know, coming into these groups every day, commenting on people's posts, being a human, talking to them, nothing beach body, building a relationship. Um, and the third thing I would do is, uh, I like to post content about those things I'm interested in, like angels, crystals or whatever. So if I make a post on my page about something like that, I'm like, dude, right, well, I know this group's going to like it. So I take my post and I share it into that group. I'm like, Hey guys, I thought you guys would be interested in this. So I thought I would share it in here. So what I'm doing is like, I'm sharing value into that group and I'm getting people to comment on my post. So it's really easy to interact with them. And you know, you just get to that point where you're chatting back and forth of, hey, like we connect, let's friend request. So that was really how I've always done it. If I'm completely honest, I'm not one of these people that had success any other way. Um, so that's honestly what I recommend is probably the best way for the UK too. Like, you know, I, I've got, I've done a lot of these calls now and I'm getting a lot of the same questions. And one of the questions is like, how do we find UK people? How do we find the UK groups? And I'm like, well, one, I don't really think there's like a UK group, but if there are like, why are they going to let you in? You're American, right? <laughs> so <laughs> kind of scratch that idea. But you know, it's, it's a case of all these other groups. They don't say, Oh, are you American? Well, get out, you know, everyone's in these groups. So it's a case of just kind of filtering through and finding where the Brits are at. Like I had to do, I just had to filter where the Americans are. And it's terrible. I would have people like talking to me from India and I'm like, sorry, no looking for Americans. <laughs> it's so bad, isn't it? <laughs> but that's what I did um, to find these people. And that's honestly, for me, one of your best ways to find British people, just be consciously making an effort to find them. And it's not that hard. If someone's talking to you in a group, you hover over their name and you see where they're from. So that's sort of what I did there. Um, I'm not really going to get into the rest of my journey as a coach because it doesn't really apply to here, but just that it took a lot longer for me to get this off the ground, but it was just being consistent with finding new people in these groups every day. Um, and the other thing is I had like a little private group and that's, I would add them to there. Like once we got connected and we were talking in private chat, I would just kind of form them, you know, fish around to see if like they're into fitness or if they're interested in getting healthy or whatever. And if I heard anything like that, I would say, well, I have this little free group. Like we're all in there just checking in every day, like just a free group, just for accountability, no more, no less. And that's how I really built up my uh, clients in the beginning. I had them in this group. We do squat challenges. This was really before people did squat challenges. I didn't know what I was doing. We were just doing stuff. But um, after one or two months of me being a coach, I felt confident enough to approach these people to invite to a challenge. And after my third month, I hit Success Club for the first time. My fourth month, I went Emerald. But it was consistent enough that by seven months, I earned enough. I was matching my income and my full-time job. So I just, I said bye-bye to my job and I started doing this ever since. So my story is really a testament to the consistency of just constantly trying to find new people and giving them value by having like some kind of free group or an ongoing group. And I know everyone does that their own way in different ways, but I feel it's really important to have like a free group where you can kind of funnel people to give them value, build that relationship more. So they're a lot more likely to just even come to you about joining a challenge group. But if you go in there every now and then, and you're just like, hey, anyone interested? It's a lot easier to get them to say yes. That's what's just always worked for me. So that's a lot of stuff I just told you guys. I think I word vomited everywhere. But yeah, just ask me questions because that's what I'm here for. Like, whatever, no questions too silly or crazy. I've heard it all. <laughs> I really have. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions? Nothing at all. So um, I know you said like, you know, you can do targeted ads, but a lot, I mean, I feel like a lot of the team doesn't have, you know, a business page or a big budget myself. I have a business page, but I don't really do ads for stuff. Um, 
So like, are there like key words that you feel like you would are like tip off that someone is UK or a group is UK or not really? Honestly, not really. Like I know I kind of dabbled with it in the beginning. Obviously I'm a little more lucky because that's where my warm market is. I never had the chance to utilize my warm market. So now I'm like, Hey, let's go. But at the same time, like I'm going to run out of them right? So I'm going to have to start connecting with people from the UK. I don't live there anymore. So I don't really feel like there's keywords as such. It's just really, if you're going to target ads, just make sure whatever you do over here, you do that direction too. But I mean, the ads thing is just a whole different ball game, a whole different training, and you need a budget for that. So that's why I really recommend the groups route. Like it takes a little bit longer. It's a little bit more work, but I found it's really successful and it really pays off. It's just a matter of really finding those Brits, but they're there. They're there. They're very vocal most of the time. <laughs> cool. Katie asked about live format. If you want to check the chat. Yes. Um, yeah. Beachbody Alive is huge over there. One of my best friends is actually a PIO instructor. So that is really popular. Um, we're going into the UK with a really big advantage. We're not just wandering into a new country and they're like, who are you? We're really well known there. I mean, Sean T is king there. They probably don't actually know so much who Tony Horton is. Just Sean T has marketed himself so well and does his own stuff over there too that Everyone knows his programs, T25, Insanity, Size. Um, those are the main ones he's known for. But yeah, so I mean, if you want to do anything, you can kind of hashtag that kind of stuff. But that's so general, I don't think that would really bring you success as, as such. But um, I guess my main point is we're going in with a brand that's known. Like people know Beachbody. I've had people follow me for years from the UK who they were never my warm market. I never knew them. And they've just been waiting for this. Um, you know, if any of you have been around a little bit longer, I'm sure you've found a few British people along the way who have just been waiting for this. Like they know what it is and they're ready for it. It's just a case of really digging in there and finding the gems pretty much. I just want to say something really fast too about that. Cause that was reminded me of something. So, um, we are probably now I'm not guaranteeing anything, but once we launch in the UK, I think there will be a surge in free leads and free coach leads because these people, like Ashleen said, have been like waiting, right? And they don't all know who to reach out to, to get a coach. So if you are not Emerald and you are not getting free leads yet, it, it's got to be a goal in the next month to start getting free leads for October. Um, and if you are working towards diamonds, same thing, because I personally only get about one coach lead a year at diamond, but I bet you there will be more when this launches, just throwing that out there. And even in itself, if any of you are even higher ranked, it's a really good goal to get to two star, uh, because the bonus pool is going to be huge. Arnold personally told me that on a one-on-one -on -one call, he was like, look, just tell everyone to get to two star because the bonus pool where those um, bonuses come out of, he was like, it's going to be called a global pool and there's going to be a huge surge in the UK mm -hmm. all of a sudden. He's like, you want to be a part of that. So okay. Good to know. Throw that out there for extra yeah. pressure, you know? Um, but yeah, it's um, like I said, it's really well known. I don't feel there's any competition. I don't think there's any competition to beach body anyway. And I don't mean that in a biased way. There's no one who really, quite does what we do in general there's kind of similar things like herbal life but they don't have fitness and there's nothing there's like daily burn but they don't have coaching or no one does what we do and so people are ready for this there's not really a competition network marketing is big in the uk so it's not like people are just going to run for their lives and be like oh you're trying to sign me up it's something they're very used to it's just really a case of using your tact and not going in like a billboard, like a big walking advertisement, just trying to rock your um, attraction marketing. And that's what's really good about still having, you know, two months really before we launch is if there's anything you're feeling a bit nervous about, go look it up and master it right now. Master to really rock your social media more, share your story more, find those people now and get them ready. Um, something else I wanted to share too was what I have been doing. So Jillian was sharing there, you know, how to prepare. Um, I've been doing some similar things and some different things, but what I've been doing is the people that I have been finding and connecting to, I'm actually taking the British people and I'll invite them to a free group. Like, let's just say, 
uh, clean eating or whatever you do, some kind of free challenge. And I'm kind of putting them, I put them in there. And you know how these groups go. Some people fizzle out, but there's some people that rise to the top right? So with those people who are really getting into it and falling in love with it, they're obviously your natural person you invite to an actual paid challenge group. So I'm going to these British people and I'm saying, hey, look, I have a challenge group coming up next month, my normal challenge group where I have my Americans in there, my North Americans, and I just invite them to join that group with the rest of us so they get the challenge group experience. Um, and what I've been doing is I've been sending them to the beachbody.co.uk, so the, the British Beachbody website, and I tell them to go get one program. So I guess that's what I'm doing a little bit different. I'm not getting them to get on demand. I'm telling them to get something like 21 day fix. That way come launch time, they can actually sign up with all access challenge pack because if they already have on demand, it kind of doesn't work for that, but it really doesn't matter. But what I've been doing, the point is, is getting the product into their hand, getting them to use it. So they're doing this challenge group with the rest of us, getting that experience getting results in the 21 day fix, which is you know basically our biggest program, and creating advocates before the launches even happen, creating people who are crazy about this, because what's gonna happen? Like, if you start a challenge group today with some British people in it, they went and bought their program, yes, you didn't make money, but see the long end game here, right? Um, in 21 days time, you're gonna have some people with really great results screaming it all over their British social media. So what's gonna happen? They're gonna have people being like, what are you doing, what are you doing? So you can tell them, hey, if you've got anyone interested, let's bring them to the next challenge group. So you're kind of like creating generations of challengers here, but not only that, you're really kind of setting up your more original challengers to be coaches because you're getting yeah. them to be their friends. And as you said you're doing, you're putting them into coach training. So by come launch day, you could have this whole little mini army of people ready to be coaches who have a lot of people who are ready to sign up because they've all gone through challenge groups and they're all in love with it. So that's kind of my plan. We'll see how successful it turns out to be, but that's what I've been doing. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a really good idea. So do you know the cost of 21 Day Fix? It's like literally the equivalent. So I think it's like $59.99. It's $59.99 pounds. They did oh, okay. 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 So that's a great idea, guys. Um, I may be sending all my UK people because I have like, I was just showing them before this call my streak and I have like a UK pipeline. Mm -hmm. So I may be, I may be recommending that. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, like you can tell them to go to the Beachbody website or the British Amazon, which is called amazon.co.uk. Um, the products on Amazon are actually Beachbody. Like if you click on it, it says sold by Beachbody. So it really doesn't matter. So they, it might make them feel easier going to Amazon since everyone knows it. But either way, perfect. Thank you for writing those links. Yeah, yeah either way, send them there and just get them to get one program. That's what I've been doing. It's I've been getting them to do that for years anyway. Just and I like that like they'll have, like if they do on demand, they don't get the physical containers. So I like that like you're sending them like to get something physical. I like that a lot. That's really smart. Okay. Yeah. And like, I mean, the only thing they're not getting is Shakeology, but my people have been going nuts to try Shakeology for years because, you know, it's really hyped up. It's really talked up by us coaches. So there's no way they're going to be like, I don't want to try it. Like, of course they're going to want to try it. So Really. Yeah, and they can get it as soon as it's available. I'm just saying, like, I think it's great that they're getting a physical program in their hands, and that makes it easier sometimes for them to post about, too, if they're, like, mm -hmm. talking about it on social media. They can show their containers. They can show their DVDs. Um, I take a lot of pictures in front of my – I did one this morning in front of my Roku because it was something like my – on demand was like work out because you love yourself and donuts or something <laughs> but it's hard to like really showcase the physical program without yeah so that's great I love that awesome yeah but um other than that that's really what I've been doing um you know I've had similar questions like what hashtags would you use and things like that and you know I've noticed even before UK was announced, a lot of people were hashtagging UK and I'm sitting here thinking, but who the heck in the UK looks up a hashtag UK, right? Like who does that? Like, do you guys run around hashtagging USA or Canada every five seconds? Like maybe only on 4th of July or, you know? <laughs> so for me, it's like, well, okay, knock yourself out. But I don't think that's overly effective. If anything, 
maybe that's where I do have the upper hand a little bit because I can hashtag like slang words, like really slang Irish words, Northern Irish. But I mean, other than that, I still haven't even had great success with that. Um, one other thing I wanted to say though, in regards to advantages and disadvantages and all that stuff, like I just want all of you to know, like this is a really level playing field. And I, I've been saying this on every call because it's very easy to kind of look around and think, well, you know, Melanie Mitchell is going to scoop everyone up or Bonnie Engel, like everyone's going to go to them. But one, if they go to them, they've probably been working their butts off like crazy to gather those people. But two, it's like we have all this prep time. We have months and have had months to prepare for this. So like all you really got to do is just kind of knuckle down and really consistently work to find these people and get them into free groups, convert them out of free groups into your paid challenge group. And from there, if they're in love, put them in a coach training. There's no reason why in two months you can't have a whole slew of people wanting to join your team. So let's not look around at what, who's doing this or Ashley's doing that. Or, you know, someone told me I was going to be a top coach and I laughed so hard because that's not my goal. And I'm just literally doing what I'm normally doing, like my same amount of invites a day. So it's, it doesn't matter if you're from there or not. I was never from here. I still made it work. I made it work because I just got to work and you guys can all do that too there's no one with huge huge advantages here or disadvantages it's just getting to it and making it happen you guys can all do this it's not hard i did it and really i'm not that gifted so <laughs> anyone can do it all right christy has a question about brands in the chat so the world's become very small and it's very very americanized so uh, I don't know how overly helpful this is, but I guess it clears up something. So we have like H&M and like everything. On every corner, there's a McDonald's, KFC. The, the same obesity epidemic is there. It's the same mentality of like, even with me trying to like, I want to, I want to get healthy. I want to get healthy. I don't know how. And you know, it's all that kind of same stuff going on. So there is a need for what we have, a dire need for this solution. People want it, even though some people may say, oh, we don't care over here. Well, like a lot of people don't care in North America either, but there are people who do. Most people want to feel better, get healthy, look better. In regards to popular brands, I mean, you might want to like look, you look up people who shop in Tesco, which is kind of like our huge supermarket chain. I can type it in. It's called Tesco. Um, there's a clothing shop called I think it's one word top shop which like a lot of like younger females um would like to go and shop in but really there's nothing else really like we use lululemon we use nike and all of that so the world especially with the internet has just become such a small place <laughs> that it just it's kind of made it harder for this kind of marketing i guess which is why i just like i said i recommend just groups and finding people and connecting with them because Ultimately, the people you have the relationship are going to be the easiest or best people to join you and join your team and take it to the next level. I know so, it's not the answer you want. <laughs> so I have a random question for you. Um, hopefully, the internet's working. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to the UK ten times, and I've gotten to know a bunch of different um, families and different cultures when I've been over there. And the one common thing that I always find when I'm staying with host family or when I'm working with school systems over there is how much they think that Americans are morbidly obese and how judgmental they are on Americans. Um, yet, ironically, they put butter on everything. Um, and so just period of like your thoughts, like it was almost to a point where they look down upon Americans because that's all they see on society on TV. Um, and I'm wondering your thought on how that's going to transfer over um, as far as, hi, I'm an American. Let me show you how to get healthy when like every family I've worked for, and I probably say 50 different families that I've worked with when I've been over there have been like, Oh, Americans are fat. <laughs> well, it's a really good question. It's kind of a loaded question, but I think for a start, like, that there's stereotypes for everyone, right? Americans have stereotypes for British. Sorry, you guys do. Simple as that, you know, people think British people are stuck up, such and such. Everyone thinks Americans are loud, you know? <laughs> like there's, you know, this kind of, the stereotypes are everywhere, but 
what's going to work for you is what's always worked for you as a coach is sharing your story, why this has worked for you and why it'll work for them. Simple as that. No one's going to have the reaction of you're an American. So, you know, there no one's going to take that perspective because at that point you should have a relationship with that person and they would know through your social media and everything through you sharing your story, what you're doing and the mission you're on. So I don't see why that would ever be an objection from my perspective. Um, like I said, there are stereotypes. Unfortunately, Americans kind of made a reputation in the world the last while. So that is a little bit difficult in going against Americans, not Canadians. <laughs> but um, I mean, ultimately, like I said, everyone stereotypes. But when you meet someone in person, you don't treat them like crap because they're different. You build a relationship and you become friends. And that's how the world really works when you're a good person, I guess. So I wouldn't worry about that. It's a good question, though. It's a really good question. And personally, I don't like the English, so whatever. <laughs> I'm not from there. I'm from Northern Ireland. They invade us. Hmm? <laughs> For the Welsh rugby teams. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's another thing. I would be careful. I don't know if any of you have done this. Like, a lot of people are using the British flag in their pictures, which is fine. Uh, some people are using the Irish flag as well because of Northern Ireland. Don't do that. Uh, stick to your British flag because Ireland, the island of Ireland is actually two different countries. The top little part, Northern Ireland, that's part of the UK. The other part is its own country, the Republic of Ireland. Two completely different countries. That's like basically saying Canada is USA. Um, and that's just because the top part of Ireland is occupied by the British. So that makes us British. I have a British passport. Um, so if you're running around with an Irish flag, it gives the impression that Irish people can sign up and join this. So I would just avoid that confusion altogether. Geography lesson. That's a good one. <laughs> What's well, funny because like people keep saying Ireland to me and I even do it too over here. I never say I'm Northern Irish because people are like, what? I think they're literally thinking I'm talking about the North of Ireland. I'm like, no, it's a whole other country. I don't really get into it. But in this case, it's kind of important to recognize that they're two different things. It would be like trying to recruit someone from Mexico. Even though it's a very, very vast difference, it's not that big a difference, but uh, legislatively, it's, they can't do it. So they'll probably be the next to come on board though, I would say. Cool. Anyone have any other questions? I'm going to be running with that by program thing. That's like the best piece of advice I feel like I got because that's super helpful. I haven't, I've been struggling to get people to do like beyond demand. I don't know. I don't know. Cause they don't, I don't know if they're really ready to commit to that, but I think one program would be like easy, easier. I feel like that, that's what's worked really well for me. Even the last few years when any of my friends from home are like, oh, I wanna do a program. I can't, I could never make money out of them. So I said, just go to Amazon. They're all on there, like pick your program. Not yeah. your and actually I said, one of my best friends is a PIO instructor. Cause I told her to get PIO and she fell in love with it. And the next thing she heard about a certification. So, I mean, that was a huge thing for her. So you just never know where it will lead to. And I'm just like you said, it's so good to have that physical product in your hand. The containers are so pretty. They work so well in photos. It's gonna really get them results because they're not measuring using every tool in the kitchen. Like we know why it works and I think it'll be so successful to get it into their hands. Yeah. And, um, also I've been getting asked a lot about are there like different foods and things like that? Will that be an issue getting certain things? Um, honestly, we have basically the same stuff. There may be a struggle that some foods are called different words like zucchini is called courgette and stuff like that. But that's not something you can really try to master as such. Um, just know that, like I said, the world has become Americanized. We've grown up on American movies like Home Alone. People over there know what you're talking about, even if you use the wrong word. Like for us, it's not fall, it's autumn, which technically it is over here too. Um, but don't feel like, oh no, I have to say autumn. We'll know exactly what you're saying. Everyone understands American terminology, so it's not an issue at all. Don't feel like, don't feel nervous about how you're wording things, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, but food wise, we have all the same stuff. The only thing I ever struggled to personally get was tofu. That's really hard to get, but everything else we have, we have quinoa. We have like our version of, in fact, Whole Foods Market is in London, but 
the rest of the UK, they have their own little health food stores, almond milk, everything's there. Any other questions? No stupid questions, guys. <laughs> no question is too silly. I, I'm sorry, I guess I just don't know conversion rates. Like I know you're saying that like, oh, it's $59 and it's 59 pounds. And here's my really stupid American question. Yeah, that sounds like 59 is 59. But like, is 59 pounds a lot? Is that a little? It's but 59 uh, pounds here, or 59 pounds, $59 here. I feel like it's kind of like middle of the road. Some people still balk at that. So like, what's it's kind, of, it's kind of the same because it is the same number, if that makes sense. It would be, it's all relative, you know, because so 59 to you is like, wow, $59, 59 pounds is wow. If they don't know any different either, but um, it actually means Americans are making more money out of British <laughs> uh, because 59 pounds is probably about $70, maybe more. It's been dropping. It's going up and down like crazy the last few years. So um, I wouldn't worry about mastering the conversions. It's just, it's all relative. They haven't released their prices yet for what it's going to be for us, but I'm just assuming it's going to be what it's always been. Everything I saw listed on their site the last few years or on Amazon, it was literally the exact same number that they would sell it for here. Yeah, so. someone asked that, I think, on the VIP page, and they said they hadn't, they hadn't released it yet. As soon as I have it, I'll share it with you guys, obviously. I think for me personally, I'd like if they lowered it a little bit over there because the pound is stronger than the dollar. Like I said, like $50, $59 would be more like in the 70s. It would be, be about $70. So um, for me, I always thought, wow, would I really want to spend 130 pounds on Shakeology? That's kind of like $160, $170. But again, it's all relative. So I don't know. So far, I've just seen them doing the same numbers. Who knows? Just lead with value and how much it's worth it, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what I can't, I keep forgetting. So we get we have most Shakeology flavors and part of the performance line. Do you know the answer? I to that? believe it's Energize and Recover, like the main ones. Okay. And then what flavors of Shakeology do they not have? That I do not know. Um, okay. I haven't heard of not. No, I haven't heard of any not getting through, but for sure, I think chocolate's in there. I really, I'm not I feel sure. like maybe some of the new vegan flavors aren't. Through. I think it could be them very possibly just because they're new, the newer ones and they would have to get them approved. But yeah, not too sure. Okay. The, the main ones are there. Okay. So you guys will be able to do a performance challenge pack because those are the two products in the performance challenge pack. So that's great. Mm -hmm. And I have another question. Sorry. Okay. So, okay, I totally get that, like, I'm a rock star coach, right? And the people who I put in my challenge group are never, ever, ever going to leave my side, right? Because I'm so amazing and I give them so much, you know, support. But, like, fact of the matter is, like, they're not signed up with me yet, right? So come August, 20, or August, October 21st, when we all get to, like, scramble for these people, how aggressive? are you going to be saying to them like hey you really need to sign up with my link like I've been with you this whole time like how I don't want to say worried but you know if they get super excited and then they go sign up and they don't get it that like now like just saying like Jillian's their coach how weird are should I get about this um it hasn't even crossed my mind, I guess. I'm not worried about it at all. Cause if anyone's already on this journey with me, it's because they have a relationship with me. Yeah, okay. no, for sure. For I sure. Even going anywhere else. And if they did for me, I wouldn't really want them anyway. Cause it's kind of screaming a lot about their integrity. Um, I mean, definitely there's been a bit of a concern like, Oh, maybe someone will get poached at the launch event and things like that. And that's just stuff you can't control. You just have to make sure you've done a good job in building a strong enough relationship. So that is within your control. And I don't think you'll see anyone leave your side, honestly, if you're doing, if you're doing it right. If you're just being a coach who's like, hi, bye, of course they'll leave, you know, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. Yeah, too. I just posted this, but like, if they just get excited and randomly sign up, but not with someone else, they just like, get excited they can just use the you can use the form and just swap them to you oh right yeah oh, that, you meant by the question my bad okay <laughs> no, no 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 
no. I, I guess I was just looking for opinions. Well, that's what I, I mean, that's what I would do. I'd be like, that's so great that you got really excited. Please let me switch you back to me. Yeah. I just be like, Oh, can you send me your order over so I can, you know, get you added to my group or something. And then you have five days. I've had a lot of people over the years who jump the gun. It's, it's great when they do it, but then you're like, Oh gosh, I have to backtrack now, but you have five yeah. days to get them and they'll be so excited. You'll know that they became a coach or they'll come and tell you and you're like, really? <laughs> um, one thing you can do to avoid that is, you know, use the coach mobile app because you can send them the invoice and have them ready. So they know it's there and they'll use that. I've right. actually stopped using the links for that stuff just because it's just easier. Yeah. I have another question if nobody else has questions. Um, what are your ideas or thoughts? Like I'm big on sending people prizes. I love prizes. I love sending you things. I love sending you gift cards because you bought something. I love sending you random things in the mail just because I love your face. I hate Canada, right? Because sorry if there's any Canadians on this call because even Canada is like so much harder to ship to. What are your thoughts on now if I need to ship things to lovely people in the UK? Or like, how can I get around it? Can I like say, hey, I'll PayPal you five bucks? Like, I, I mean, what are your thoughts on how I can still love on them without making this like this huge hassle? Chrissy answered the question. I would oh. order from a British website and get it delivered to them. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I would do that unless it's something you're personally sending them up. That will cost a bit. Um, other than that, I would definitely order from a British website for sure. Okay. Everything's on Amazon. So <laughs> yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah, it's a good question. How do you sh like, um, let's say it's something I can't order. Like for Christmas, I've sent the coaches on my, the active coaches on my team, tank tops, stuff like that. Like something I've had personally made here in the U S how do you sh ship? Do you just have to use like a UPS or FedEx or something? Yeah, just USPS. So just send it international. If it was something like a tank top, it would probably cost about $10. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Yeah. It's the heavier, the worse it gets. Like I shipped Shakeology multiple times because it was like family members. That shit's expensive. So that was costing me like, I think it was $55. <laughs> it was a joke, but stuff that's because there's like a limit and then they just start kind of adding loads of, I don't know, fees on or something, but regular stuff like that, you're looking at 10, $15, not too bad. Like a tank, that's not going to weigh anything. So I would think like what's going to be really light. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'll base all my Christmas gifts on. What yeah. is the lightest item I can send? Send them a handwritten note. <laughs> <laughs> Good questions. Um, someone asked about lava bread. I'm sorry. I have no idea what that is. So. <laughs> I'm not that American or is that a British thing? I don't know. I'm Northern Irish. I don't associate with the English, so I don't know. <laughs> Am I joking? <laughs> no one likes them. Okay. <laughs> joke I know some lovely British or English people I call them British because I consider myself Irish but that's a long story <sighs> anything else you guys good is everyone feeling a little bit more confident after we reviewed kind of the groups we're doing and also like how to really talk to these people so it sounds like Facebook groups is kind of the the way to go, um, especially for those of us that don't have big ad budgets or like pages. Um, and I don't either like the rest of you. So, um, everything I do is free and I'm all about free. So. Me too. Make a, my recommendation for you guys is to make a list of five things that have nothing to do with health and fitness and start joining groups based on those things. And so great. You meet a bunch of Americans and Canadians too. Guess what? Yeah. There's plenty of people to help here, you know, so. We're still here. We're still doing our mission here. It's not nearly over. And if anything, you could be even more successful here right now because so many people are focused on the UK. <laughs> this is your time. Right, right. So pick five things, you know, if you're a mom or you're, um, you're a mom that does something, mom, boy mom, girl mom, I don't know, dogs, um, you know, nurses, um, if you're like Ashley and said, she's into like, you know, stars and yeah, like that sort of stuff. It doesn't, it just needs to be something about you to connect with people that you're 
gonna find this very difficult to do if you're not connecting with your tribe. So if you're like joining groups for stuff you're not interested in, that's no fun. <laughs> like you're not going to find people you want to talk to and you're going to be like, Oh my God, I don't want to talk about, you know, rum. I don't know. Join. I don't know. Whatever. I don't want to talk about this stuff, but if you find stuff you're interested in, you're going to want to go in there and post every day because it's interesting to you. So keep that in mind when you start joining groups. Yeah. So you can share value and stuff. It's such an effective way to get them to come on your post and then they'll come and check out your page. Because remember I was saying, you're not talking about beach body at all in these groups. You're purely relationship building. So then they may come and take a peek over and see what's going on in your life. And then you're doing your job effectively, doing your sharing correctly and your attraction marketing. That's when they'll start learning about you and coaching and everything else you're into. And that's really what's going to attract them to you and take you to the next step. So I don't talk about beach body at all. I mean, for me, I'm not beach body. I'm Ashling. Um, I'm the airy fairy person who likes to do readings and all that kind of stuff. And that's truly how I, I bring people to me and how I connect with lots of people. And it's so much fun. Cause like they get me, like, could you imagine if I was attracting like, no offense to anyone who's religious, but if I'm attracting like ev evangelicals or whatever, they're not really going to connect with all the stuff I'm talking about. It would make it miserable for both of us. So if that's your thing, connect with those people, you'll do great. Simple as that. Things are fun. Yeah. That's kind of like a basic thing. I know we've, if you've been around a long time, you probably have heard that a bunch of times. Um, but, you know, just go into, like, enter stuff you're really interested in and connect. Um, and don't think about the business so much. Like, just think about enjoying yourself and getting to know people. I have a question on that. I know that's what, not what this call is for, but, I mean, if we're all still here on the phone. Um, so I've been joining groups. I joined uh, like a couple big brother groups. I don't know if anybody else watches that show, but I was trying to find things that I'm into and I really like really awful trashy television and come to find out a lot of people are way more into it than I am, which is <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, but I struggle. Like I comment on, on, the, on the threads and stuff and I try to get the connections going. And maybe it's just the group I'm in. Maybe it's just not a great group. But it just doesn't seem to go anywhere. So, like, maybe I'll comment a couple times, I'll private message, but then we're not friends, so they don't see it. It just feels like the whole thing is awkward. You yeah, I think it's that way. Maybe Big Brother isn't the thing to be following. But. <laughs> it's definitely harder whenever it's someone else's content you're commenting on, which is why it's really good if it's something that you can contribute to, bringing your own posts into and they're commenting on. Then you can really legit have that conversation, talk back and forth, build a relationship. Um, it definitely takes more time. I'm not going to lie. Like I, I had to go the longer route for this business to work for me, but it's what's really um, – worked very very well like I have no idea who other people people just do it I don't know how the other ones do it <laughs> you know there's people who are just like attracting people to them like crazy and for me I'm just one of those people that have to really work for it but I'm connected by a really rich group of people who get me which is really nice so it just it takes work I would say too like I don't pm people really re so like what I'll do is I'll like someone will post something, I'll comment, I'll shoot them a friend request. The worst thing is they reject it, who cares, or they don't accept it, or they don't see it. But I don't PM them right away. I just like, let them be my friend, check out my page. And, you know, I'll start commenting on their page. So they see more of my stuff. But I don't like, I, I used to be like, Oh, thanks so much for connecting. Your kid is so cute. And I don't do that anymore. Because I think that too many people are afraid of the network marketing spammers and I just want them to just see me. That's exactly what I do too. And I used to do the whole initial first message. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm yeah. noticing in a couple of the groups I'm in, they're revamping the rules to say like no friend requests allowed. Uh, then just get out, then get out of the group. Yeah, no. And I, I did, I was like, okay, that's, this is a really random group, but I'm just noting it. I'm like, you know, it's getting to the point, like you're saying, where obviously everybody's using the same techniques and people are getting, you know, sensitive to it. 
I wouldn't say everybody. I mean, the moment I mentioned it, all your heads went down and started taking notes. So I wouldn't say everybody is doing it at all. But yes, there are some people. A lot of people are getting spammed that way, I think. But uh, for me, it's about listening to your gut, right, um, with the conversation. Like if you're kind of chatting back and forth, commenting on a post, if you don't feel like it's at that point, like in real life, if you're not really comfortable with someone, you're not going to say, give me your number so we should meet up try to get it to a point where you feel like, hey, we click, would you mind if we friend requested? That will really help with that. Like they can't stop people from making friends and groups and friend requesting. They're just trying to stop people from doing it to every person who they comment to twice, you know? So it's truly a case of trying to get a little bit of a conversation going on. Maybe the next few days, focus on trying to find where that person's commenting so you can kick off a conversation with them again build it up that way but it's, it's definitely not a race and i think that's where people make the big mistake and do it wrong Does that makes sense yeah no oh, great tips thank you you're welcome anything else the lava bread is welsh yeah i don't I'm know out. let's just put it down to a carb it's a yellow okay <laughs> if it's bread it's yellow <laughs> <laughs> Probably is covered in butter too, right, Katie? <laughs> oh, everything's covered in butter here too, or sugar. So, like, it's really similar. We eat really very similar. Just you know, we have a certain cultural differences when it comes to food, but it's totally a similar setup. It's just get them on the containers. <laughs> It'll make life easier. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, it is almost 10. Ashley and I want to thank you so much for joining us. I feel like I got a lot more than just UK tips out of this. I seriously appreciate that. Um, and I thought it was super helpful. If you guys come up with anything, I can send Ashley a message. I'm sure she wouldn't mind. So after the fact, if you guys have anything, just let me know and I'll get the recording up shortly. Totally. Thank you for having me here, guys. Okay. It was really fun. And thank you for the <laughs> Thank Bye you. Guys.